Hello, everyone, and welcome to the 2020-2021 school year. I want to say a special welcome to the class of 2025, as it's their first year here at JHS. So welcome to this eighth grade class. And welcome to everyone else to Greater Johnstown High School, be it in person or virtually. This year is very new and very different, and it's something we're all going to work through together. And I just wanted to give you some things that we all uh, need to know going into our first day and as we go through the rest of the school year. So eighth grade, it's a very important and exciting year of your life. Um, the world is in front of you here at JHS with lots of opportunities. It's a great time to get ready for your high school education. And uh, it's no better time to get ready than in eighth grade. A lot of you might be nervous. That's normal. A lot of you might have questions, and that's okay, too. We all have those things when we start in a new place. We want you to feel like um, you're supported and responded to here. So we are working every day to make sure that our students feel safe uh, and comfortable in an environment to learn. So first off here with the principals, who are they? I'm Mr. Hoffman, I'm one of the assistant principals in the eighth grade academy principal. Mr. Dady is our head building principal and Mr. Conway is uh, the other assistant principal in special education LEA. So getting right into it, what's the beginning of this year look like? We are working on a hybrid schedule. Here it is right laid out for you in a table. And on Mondays, group A will attend school. Group B attends school on Tuesday. Group C attends school on Wednesday and group D attend school on Thursday. That's all physical attendance. The other days when groups are not attending school, they are attending virtually. So you're to attend school every day, but physically to show up only one day per week in the hybrid model. And then on Fridays, everyone is attending school virtually. You're to attend school daily. So that's there for you. That's the schedule. And make sure that you understand courses move forward daily in the hybrid schedule. So you got to work to keep pace with the curriculum regardless of which group you're in. So everybody's working groups A, B, C, D, and virtual all working on the same thing on Monday. Most teachers are going to have their lesson posted on Monday, ready to roll for the week. And that lesson delivery will happen for everybody on lesson day one on Monday. And then lesson day two, everyone will continue on. So that time you get to come in, those hybrid students, the time you get to come into school to be physically with your teachers is a great opportunity for you. If you have roadblocks, if you have questions, come prepared to school to ask questions about the lesson for that week or the, or the project that you're working on or the thing that you have to get done. If you run into roadblocks along the way, be proactive and reach out to your teachers but look at your time to come into school face-to-face -face as an opportunity to learn and grow. School's gonna look a little different, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. Um, you're gonna have lots of opportunity to communicate and ask questions of your teachers and get some good personal time with them each week. So expectations for virtual learning. This is for everybody. Always be respectful and courteous to others especially during the Google Meet and the virtual sessions. When you're talking with somebody live virtually, um, when you enter a Google Meet or enter a chat, make sure that you're muted to begin with so no background noise ends up getting in the way of a presentation or a lesson. Any inappropriate or offensive or threatening comments, any sort of misrepresentation of identity or disruptive behavior isn't going to be tolerated. It'll be dealt with under our school code of conduct. So please make sure that we're exhibiting positive behaviors uh, in the virtual space. And please don't video record, take snapshots, record audio, 
um, or retransmit any part of your classroom Google Meet uh, sessions or any recordings of teachers and lessons, doing so could violate federal law. Um, and that's something we definitely don't want to do. Uh, we definitely don't want you to end up in that kind of trouble either. Um, if those things do occur, we will have to deal with them. But we just want to be upfront with everybody um, to make sure that we're protecting um, everyone in the school and keeping a safe space in the virtual in the virtual room. Students, you've got to use your GJSD email account to log into your Google Meets and virtual classroom sessions and Google Classroom. Those were sent home in the welcome packets, uh, so you should have all of your logins. Keep those for your records so that you have access at any time. The login credentials should not and must not be shared. If you share that information, it violates other students' and teachers' rights to confidentiality. And allowing an unauthorized person to use your account definitely takes away from a productive and positive learning environment. So make sure you're using only your login. Anybody who's disruptive, trespasses a Google Meet, uh, impersonates somebody else by stealing their login is going to receive appropriate consequences uh, according to our code of conduct. And then attendance expectations. Daily attendance is mandatory. That's PA law and follows the PDE guidelines. So virtual students must check in and attend their classes daily by showing evidence of participation somehow, some way. So a teacher might have an assignment, they might have a chat, they might have a place for you to comment or a Padlet for you to put something on. Um, go into your Google Classroom and participate every single day in that virtual space. And virtual students, you are following the board approved GJSD calendar. So there is school every day of the week for you that we have school here at JHS. That attendance will be tracked in PowerSchool and students that have excessive absences, even excessive virtual absences, will be referred to the GJSD truancy officer. Make sure, I can't stress this enough, make sure you're attending your virtual classrooms every day and participating in some way to show that you have attended school. Truancy will be handled in the same manner for virtual students as it is for the traditional and hybrid learners. So eighth grade, what are you gonna learn this year? You have your core classes, there they are for you, your English, your literature, your science, your math, and your civics. You're also gonna have some rotation classes. You have hectomesters, which is a division of the year into six parts. There are 30 day rotations for those hectomester classes and they're kind of like electives. But there's also some intervention classes there to help students grow and learn quickly, um, regardless of their ability level. And those are RTI classes for math, science or reading. And many of you will be joining one of those ro rotations in an RTI class throughout the school year, virtually or in person. Um, there's also an AB day schedule with career and work education and STEM eight. So who are your teachers, eighth graders? Your core class teachers are here. English and literature are taught by Mrs. Comparator, Mrs. Vasoko, and Mr. Wentz. Science is taught by Mr. Gallagher and Mrs. Teeter. Math in eighth grade is taught by Mrs. Kniss and Mr. Ross and civics is taught by Mr. Rabley and Mrs. Zepka. You have some rotation classes as well within the hectomester and your teachers for that. Um, your health and phys ed rotation uh, for semester to semester will be Mrs. Butchko and Mr. Mull. Um, you also have career and work education, which right now we have a long-term substitute position. Um, Mr. Hennigan made a move to go to the middle school he would have been your career and work teacher, but we will have a teacher in there for you for that class. It's a really good class to explore what it is you want to do here at JHS and beyond. STEM 8 is Miss Yainer. Uh, she does an excellent job with STEM 8. Really good hands-on class, creative. Um, like what she does there. Lots of cool projects. You guys get to see some of how science and engineering and mathematics all blend together uh, in her classroom. 
your other rotation classes, you'll have the opportunity, some of you will have the opportunity to take a citizenship one and two class in the hectometer rotations. Those are just 30 day classes. Current events one and two with Mr. Ravley. Again, same thing, 30 day class. Music band or orchestra. Um, some of you may be in band or orchestra and you'll have Mr. Bukowski or Mr. File, depending on which one you're in. And music is also involved for all eighth graders in those hectometer rotations for 30 days. And a media literacy class uh, is available as well in the hectometer rotations, and that would be with Mrs. Thomas. So who else can help you besides your teachers? Just got a lot of teacher names, and feel free if you if I'm going too fast, feel free to rewind back up and listen to it again. But who else can help you? We have a dedicated guidance counselor for the eighth grade. That's Ms. Hardison. Uh, After School Live will start in October. Um, the Trojan College Access Program is available to you as well. Student Assistance Program, ACRP Behavior Specialists, Kevin and Lana, and Victim Services. We have uh, Ms. Gabby Cull. Uh, helps with victim services as well. So we have lots of services and supports that help students here outside of the academics. Safety supports. You've got three principals here, a full-time intervention specialist in Mr. Gibson, full-time school resource officer with Officer Spanko, four security guards at all times, victim services counselor, ACRP behavior specialist, secure building, uh, designated eighth grade wing just for eighth graders, hallway and cafeteria monitors, and cameras all over the place for security. Uh, we also will be following the CDC guidelines for social distancing and mask wearing in school. I have mine off right now because I'm by myself in my office with my door closed and locked. Um, but if anyone were to come in here, I'd be grabbing my mask and making sure that before they come in, I put my mask on. So for now, for the presentation so that you can see me talk, I have my mask off. Anytime I'm out and about in the building or around other people, I have that mask on at all times. So the other part of this is too, there's hand sanitizer throughout the building, making sure that you're keeping your hands clean. When you do go to the restroom, make sure that you're washing your hands thoroughly. I think the guidelines say sing happy birthday to yourself twice. So make sure you're washing your hands when you make those restroom visits. And in between, there's hand sanitizer in the hallways and in the classrooms for you. There are water bottle refilling stations around the school. I did a recording earlier on a welcome back video to show you those. Check that out when you get the chance. Make sure you bring your own water bottle, okay? Eighth grade, when's your lunch? It's after sixth period. Uh, from 1216 to 1246 on normal scheduled days. And eighth grade does have its own lunchtime. So our positively stated expectations in the high school is that Trojans have pride. And there it is right there. Have a positive attitude, have respect, be involved, be dependable, and be empathetic, meaning be able to put yourself into somebody else's shoes to understand how they feel. We value these five things very much. And if you exude pride in this way, you're going to have a really good time in school and you're going to enjoy your learning and you're going to make school a fun and safe and enjoyable place to be. So the focus for 2021 is be involved. Uh, our, our pride uh, teacher team got together and decided that I or involved was the focus for this year. We got to make sure that we're being engaged in school daily and promoting the health and safety of all, being involved in keeping everyone safe, participating in your online instruction, getting involved in the virtual classroom, and communicating with your teachers in a timely manner. So staying involved is going to be our focus for this year. If you exude pride, there are positive rewards that can come out of that and positive recognitions that come from showing those kind of behaviors. And the way that we reward that is through currency called the Trojan Buck. It's how you earn experiences, privileges, raffle tickets, and even some Trojan gear throughout the year. We also have positive notes, which are called pride referrals. 
and anybody can submit a pride referral for any one of any role in the building, teacher, student, uh, anyone in the office, custodian, so on and so forth. If somebody does right by you, we want to recognize them. If you do right by somebody else, we want to recognize you. And that's what the pride referral is great for. So it's a positive write-up. It earns you a Trojan buck. They used to be called Dady Dollars. And you could get your name posted in the school on the TVs. So I told you who all you could write up. There's a full list and more. And you can submit the pride referral too, students. So different examples there of positive rewards, positive behaviors, going above and beyond to represent Trojan pride. Even just a random act of kindness can go noticed, and it does. Um, our eighth grade teachers have their eyes out for positive behaviors all the time, and that's what we want to see. Be engaged in class, use good manners, pick up after yourself, leave it better than you found it. Anywhere. Doesn't matter where. So some little incentives here. Student of the month, you can earn a, a Swiss reward day uh, or classroom incentives from teachers. And some of these things might look a little bit different this year with in-person and virtual. And our teacher team and our student team will work on what those incentives might look like and what might be meaningful. All right. So. Let's break it down a little bit. We're getting close to the end. There's a couple of frequently asked questions all the time with this. So I want to make sure that we drill it down so uh, everybody knows how we ought to answer these questions. So attendance is every day, regardless of your model. We talked about that. School is to be attended every single day, whether it's virtually or in person. School starts at 7.10 in the morning, okay? Be in class by 7.35, and your virtual classes will occur daily between 7.35 and 2.18. Check your Google Classroom for your teacher's schedule. Sorry that that got cut off at the bottom. Didn't format the way that I thought it would. But make sure you're checking into your virtual classes. And if you want to attend with your teachers on time, it's going to be sometime between 7.35 and 2.18 for the high school when the teachers are online. Check your teacher's Google Classroom, and they will have their schedule on there for when they're going to be live. So what should you wear? Always be dress code appropriate, even in the virtual space. Get dressed for your virtual learning, and masks are mandatory in school. Okay? So when you're signing up and you're get signing in for your virtual, make sure that you're dressed appropriately for school when you are doing your virtual learning. It can be a hoodie, it can be a t-shirt, but make sure it's appropriate for school. We don't want offensive or inappropriate messages or images or anything like that on for a Google Classroom or Google Meet session. Um, you'll be asked to shut down your camera. We do wanna see you. We wanna make sure that everything's okay. So if you can show us your face with your camera, that is appreciated. If you can't, just participate the best that you can. All right, when you're in school, dress code applies as well. All right, eighth grade. What's next in high school? What's happening for you? So there are several pathways for success at JHS, and they all look a little bit different, but there are exciting opportunities that help meet every student at their interests and need. Uh, the academic and college pre preparation pathway, uh, the vocational and career readiness pathway, the associate degree in high school pathway, which includes ACE, uh, accelerated college education classes, dual enrollment classes, most people call them, and the Summit Learning Academy. So there's several different ways that you can be successful here in JHS. So the associate degree in high school program, uh, which is regulated by Penn Highlands, is provided here by Greater Johnstown School District requires a minimum eighth grade GPA of 3.0 or higher. Your citizenship and your attendance is also taken into account as you apply for that associate degree in high school program. Penn Highlands doesn't really make exceptions. 
So student applications have been denied in the past for citizenship, attendance, or a low GPA. Any one of those things could cause Penn Highlands to flag it and say, eh, that student can't, they're not going to be able to participate in the program. We look at this as a scholarship opportunity for our students. It's a game changer. Students can earn a two-year associate degree before they graduate high school. All covered, all the tuitions covered by the school district, so long as the student is passing their classes and excelling in the, the associate degree program. So going into the associate degree program requires that students enter the Summit Learning Academy at JHS. That's due to the scheduling needs and for the benefit of the student. We started this just a couple of years ago and it's been very beneficial because of the flexibility of the Summit Learning Academy. There are a lot of JHS teachers that are certified to teach dual enrollment courses, those accelerated college education credit courses that I talked about a minute ago. And JHS students can earn college credits for dual enrollment courses starting in ninth grade. Some of the first ones that they can take are Computer Applications 9 and AP US History 1. Uh, Penn Highlands will accept these dual enrollment credits along with other schools. And you can go to Penn Highlands for one additional year and even earn your associate's degree. Even if you don't get into the associate degree in high school program, you can uh, get 20 up to 28 ACE credits here at JHS and then go to Penn Highlands and finish out your associate degree in just one year. The vocations at JHS are an exciting opportunity for students that want to earn a trade and become industry certified while in high school. Um, we offer, I believe now it's 13 vocational programs this year um, and a school to work program where students when their senior year comes around and they've met most of their graduation requirements can go work half a day out in the workforce. The better your grades are in eighth grade, the easier it is to get into the vocational shop or program that you want. Some of those vocations are in high demand. When we look at a student's GPA or how high their grades are to determine who gets in there first. So make sure you're doing well in eighth grade if you wanna get into some of those programs that are in high demand. All right, as we wrap up here, the bottom line is do your best. Do that every day. Have pride in your school. Follow those positively, ex uh, positively stated expectations. Have a positive attitude. Be respectful. Be involved, especially. Be dependable and have empathy for others. Be understanding of how others are feeling and what they're going through. Give your best effort each day and you will have a great experience at JHS. Reach for those opportunities to work hard and be nice to others. It goes a long way in being polite, being gracious, and being thankful. Can't wait to see all of you. Looking forward to getting started for this school year. Um, and I look forward to seeing all of you grow uh, as your graduation dates all approach very quickly. High school goes faster than you think. Make the most of every moment. We'll see you soon. Mr. Hoffman signing off.